Hey, I didn't see you there. Guess what I just did? Well, haven't done it yet, actually. But I'm giving away a copy of Paper Mario the Origami King. To enter, all you gotta do is like this video. Drop a comment down below. The comment is very important. Subscribe to the channel. That's kind of important too. As soon as hitting that bell icon so you get notified of all of the videos we do on this channel. I want to thank all of you guys for entering and good freaking luck. Hey everyone, welcome back to Prom News. Let me say this one more time. This is the Rub Jance and you're watching Prom News. Wait, wait, wait. Prom News? Prom News. It's prime time, baby. Let's go. We're back. Welcome. Prime News is back. We plan to be doing Prime News Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday as well. Now, today we only have four big stories for you guys, including a little bit of a Nintendo Direct rumor. I know how much you guys love that stuff. We also have some PlayStation 5 news coming your way. But you know what? Let's get into our very first story. Did you know? In 2004, heading into 2005, there was a Pokemon MMO actually in discussions behind the scenes. Now, this gets a little crazy. See, it was proposed by IQ. For those who don't know who IQ is, that is the company Nintendo used to work with to release their platforms in China when gaming platforms were banned. It was like a workaround. It was really funky how they pulled that off. Really old school stuff. If you guys know anything about the Chinese market, you'll understand why this happened. And the proposal and the supposed concept that was being made was based around it being for the Game Boy Advance. And the it would be mostly offline. So we're, we're right, MMO offline, but bear with me. There was an offline component that would be the main brux of the game that was based off of Fire Red and Leaf Green. Remember those games? It was kind of based off of that. However, you could plug your Game Boy Advance into a PC and actually play online with other players in um, some sort of online MMO-like world. And this gameplay was based on the online components in Pokemon Coliseum. See how it's kind of adding up there, trying to combine best concepts together? Obviously, this ended up not working. The online component didn't work that well, and we never actually saw it publicly. But this came from a massive data leak. You guys know the data leak we're talking about. You know, L is real, aka Luigi was originally going to be in Mario 64. That's right. Like all this big game leaks have been happening of Ocarina of Time, Star Fox 2, etc. We're getting source code, all this crazy stuff out there. We're getting emulators that Nintendo used on Wii. All this stuff is leaking out there like crazy off of Nintendo servers. And this was actually kind of a hidden gem under there that might be the biggest news ever is that a Pokemon MMO actually was in some sort of development at some point inside Nintendo's headquarters uh, or really the Pokemon company's headquarters at this point, Game Freak, all that jazz. Pretty exciting stuff. Um, obviously it didn't happen. I would love to see a Pokemon MMO. I think everyone would love to see a Pokemon MMO. It's the one IP Nintendo has. It's like, yeah, an MMO makes a hell of a lot of sense, but hasn't happened yet. Um, also, there's like this thing where Pokemon in the MMO would be like region based. So if you're in like Britain or the United States or China, you get different types of Pokemon. Sort of a precursor to what happens in Pokemon Go a little bit, although Pokemon Go is a lot more advanced than it was possible back then. Still kind of crazy. Wanted to throw it out there. You guys let me know what you think about this crazy concept for a Pokemon MMO back in the early 2000s. This next story comes from Game Informer, and we have no verification of it outside of Game Informer just saying, trust us, it's happening. So Spider-Man, you know that Spider-Man game coming out, you know, launching PlayStation 5, etc. The Miles Morales game. People wondered if it's, if it's like an expansion pack or what it is. It seems like it's actually a brand new game, like a standalone Spider-Man game. That's really exciting. Not like the Luigi U DLC, more like a Spider-Man 2. Crazy, right? Good, awesome, that's good news. But did you know that's according to Game Informer, a remastered version of the original Spider-Man game that came out in 2018 on the PlayStation 4 will be releasing with it. It will literally be bundled in with the game. Crazy exciting to me. Obviously, anyone who missed out on the first game gets to play it, then play the Miles Morales stuff. Really cool stuff. I'm glad to see this happening. I assume you'll be able to play the, the Spider-Man PlayStation 4 game on your PlayStation 5. Don't know if it's going to include the remaster or the up res or whatever they're doing here, but it's kind of cool. and. Is it shocking? We saw Spider-Man, uh, the original game, running on the SSD and stuff like years ago, to be honest, with the PlayStation 5. So I'm not surprised this exists. But right now, Game Informer is the sole source on this. So we're trusting Game Informer's ability to get reporting right. And Game Informer doesn't put out a lot of breaking news reports themselves. They're focused more on game reviews and discussion and interviews. So hey, 
take it with a grain of salt if you want, but looks like we're getting a remaster of Spider-Man bundled in with Miles Morales. This next one's also PlayStation 5 related. Don't worry, that Nintendo Direct stuff's coming. I know some of you guys are, 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 are trying to jump ahead here, but listen to me. PlayStation 5 is coming out this holiday, and there's been a lot of um, you know worries about that and Xbox Series X and COVID-19 and all the production levels and all this jazz. Well, Digitimes apparently has, I don't know, supposed inside sources in the manufacturing, which is easier to get sources for that than it is to get sources inside Sony because you got to just get sources at the factory level. But apparently Sony will have about 10 million PlayStation 5s ready for 2020 launch. So 10 million PlayStation 5s they plan to sell between November and December. But it gets even crazier than that. In the first five years, PlayStation 5 is on the market. The internal development and production plans of PlayStation 5 is to produce 120 to 170 million PlayStation 5s in five years. That is the internal like order sheet, a guesstimate, what Sony is pushing to happen at the actual manufacturing level. So 120 to 170 million. That's more than the PlayStation 4. By the way, 170 million beats out the PlayStation 2. Sony's clearly planning for this to be their biggest single console generation of all time. If not, second biggest just below the PlayStation 2. So I wish them luck. Maybe they're right. Um, we'll see. All I know is Sony systems are almost, you can almost pencil them in for 100 million, but like 120 to 170 in five years? I mean, that's how many they plan to put out. Maybe they plan to take six years to sell them all, but whew, Sony's being ambitious. If you were worried that Sony was maybe not sure about this generation, they're apparently being ambitious as hell if DigiTimes is to be believed. Now, the last one we have here, this is kind of like a rumor, a rumor fest, right? We got a rumor fest prime news here, all jacked up. Um, but this next one's really interesting because the person talking about this, talking about this Nintendo Direct rumor is King Zell. Now, for those who don't know who King Zell is, he is a forum user over on Reset Era that has a 100% track record with everything he has ever put out about Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo. 100%. He's one of the most trustworthy leakers in the entire industry. Now, he doesn't talk about Nintendo much. He did leak the, the July 28th date a while ago. He was right on that. We talked about how some other people were right on that as well. Seemed that that was a really popular date among leakers. But King Zell's been right on a lot of things. And the bottom line is, he's basically telling us we're getting a Nintendo Direct in August. Because there were people wondering, when are we getting the next showcase? When are we getting the next Direct? And he said, wait for August. So it's happening in August. Beyond that, though, like, I don't think it's that shocking because they said we're getting more partner showcase directs. Okay, cool. Get one in August. We might get one every month. But this is where it gets really crazy. See, he's, he's saying, he's basically talking about the next two directs. And he's saying the next thing Nintendo does is going to be small. The thing after is going to be the big Nintendo Direct we've been waiting for. Now, not sure if that's landing in August, September, when it's coming, but he's saying the next one's going to be another small thing. You're going to see another partner showcase. You're going to see an indie world. You're going to see something. Whatever you're going to see is going to be something smaller. The next thing from, from Nintendo is still another small thing, but it will be followed up with the big boy Nintendo Direct that we've been waiting 300 plus days for, Literally, if they drop it in September, it'll be a year anniversary from the last big one. So he's basically telling us we are going to get a big Nintendo Direct this year. It's happening. There's no doubt in anyone's mind anymore. King's out. Put it out there. Next one's something smaller. The one after, big deal. So I don't know if the one in August is going to end up being the big one and they're going to do something before that or if it's just going to be another showcase. He didn't get specific on if it's a, 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 a small Nintendo Direct next month, a big one the next month. He didn't give us the details on that. He just said there's one one small something coming from Nintendo and then the big Kahuna lands. So be excited because, again, there's a lot of leakers out there, a lot of rumor mongers out there. But King Zell, again, is among the most trustworthy of the entire bunch. So, woo! Let's get pumped around here. It's a Ric Flair action. Oh, woo! <laughs> All right, folks. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I am Nick. Look, the Nintendo Rebel Jets from Nintendo Prime. I'm so jazzed right now. This was such a like a rumor packed, um, you know, Prime news. Again, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every single week we'll be dropping a Prime news episode. Also, Friday nights at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, or really Central D C D T time right now, actually, because we're not on whatever. We're not in daylight savings right now. Bottom line is, 
Friday nights, 8 p.m. Central, we will be also hosting the Nintendo Prime Podcast for the foreseeable future. So stay tuned for that. I'm jazzed, I'm pumped, and I'm going to catch each and every one of you in the next episode. Thank you.